So professional. So professional. I've turned this down in a minute. Okay, so good morning and uh, welcome to St. Nick's. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! So today it is uh, the Feast of Pentecost, where we have the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, that comes down upon us and upon the disciples. And also as well, it's something to do with the Queen or something. Someone told me the other day. <laughs> Someone on the lap, don't know, anyway. Someone on the lap, innit? Someone on the telly about it? <laughs> Anyway, yes, all right, that was a joke. It's a cosmic Republican on the sleigh. Um, yeah, so today we're giving thanks for uh, 70 years of uh, the reign of Queen Elizabeth II on her uh, Platinum Jubilee. So, uh, and today in our readings we have uh, the Spirit coming upon the Apostles at Pentecost in our first reading, and we will think about how that can be a reality for us today and how uh, the Queen in her life has been an example of somebody who is empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit in how she lives. So we're going to sing together now, unaccompanied, our first song, In the Lord I'll Be Ever Thankful. It's all right, I'll start it, I'm Welsh, you all right. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful, in the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid, lift up your voices, the Lord is here. Lift up your voices, the Lord is here. In the
Hey, please be seated now. So I see how. But like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Children, I'm not saying anything when you're around. That's right. Well done. <laughs> but like you. So now we bring together, uh, as we bring to God those things from this week which have blessed us and enriched us as we offer our worship. So let's think together now of one or two good things that have happened this week that we'd like to give thanks to God for. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through the Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him. He is revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore let us in patience open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. We have not always worshipped God our Creator. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We have not always followed Christ our Saviour. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit our guide. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins and heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we stand to say with Gloria. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To Him be glory forever. To Strengthen your children with the gift of faith, and revive your church with the breath of love, and renew the face of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Both the readings today are from the New Testament, and the first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, when the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. 
When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, ha, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we start to sing our next song, Reckless Love. I don't 
don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prays for his disciples. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture will be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world more than I am of the world. But you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself. My prayer is not for them alone. 
I pray for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may brought to be brought to complete unity. The world will know you, that you sent me, and I have loved them, even as you loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, and to see my glory, the glory you have given me, because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know you've sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have given me may be in them and that my myself may be in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. Happy birthday! <laughs> You're the church, and it's the church's birthday. So happy birthday! Nothing in chocolate. We get cake. Yeah. It's Saint Nicholas' birthday as well. It is tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Are you finished? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting. I'm starting. At the MU celebrations of Jackie Frederick's commissioning as the president of the Bristol Diocese Mothers Union, all the active MU churches were there with their banners. As we all lined up behind them. This sea of banners had a real effect on me, and I realised what happened in days of old when they were going into battle. These banners stirred them up, and I felt as though I was going into battle. And I mentioned this to Bishop, Bishop Viv, who was standing by me, and we got into a conversation then about banners on Whit Sunday in my hometown, my home county of Lancashire. Wow, they knew how to celebrate with Sunday. It was amazing. Every church, in, well, all the churches had their own, all the villages had their own processions, and all the towns had their own, but the big ones like Manchester, the Diocesan centres, all the churches in the diocese would go. It would take over an hour for the procession to pass you. And every church had their own banner, the children dressed in white. It was an amazing occasion, but it was also an amazing opportunity. What a witness to the fact that the church was still alive. Pentecost is a Jewish celebration. It's the celebration of God's provision 50 days after the other Jewish celebration of Passover, which is our Easter. And God chose this time to pour out his spirit on his fledgling church. And that empowered it. As we celebrate this over the years, we're once again reminded that God is always with us. And he wants to pour out his spirit on us always. Sometimes we need it stirring up a bit. Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit promised by the Father to empower them. The Spirit of God's always been working in his church, in his creation. But what happened this Pentecost was that ordinary mortals like Simon Peter, Philip, James, and all the others, and you and me, were able to become like Jesus. Not by our own efforts, 
but by the working of the Holy Spirit. It was the birthday of the church. And what a birthday. All the disciples were transformed and none more than Peter, the one who denied Jesus, ran away when he needed him, was now standing, as we heard in our reading, standing boldly, empowered by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit never draws attention to himself. He always points to Jesus. At the first Christian Pentecost, the Spirit of God moved and the disciples, once and for all, were catapulted out of hiding into the open. And 3,000 were added to their number in one day. But the Holy Spirit didn't come just to give the disciples a warm, fuzzy sensation. It came to transform them into bold witnesses who live out in the world. Sometimes we, as a church, are guilty of waiting in our church buildings, expecting that one day people will start to come in and fill them again. And sometimes we think things like, if we change the organ for a worship band, <laughs> or if we serve a better coffee, <laughs> or if we get a top-of-the-range set of equipment that never goes wrong and makes funny noises, <laughs> then people will start flocking in on Sunday morning. But when the Holy Spirit came that first Pentecost, the disciples didn't wait for people to come to them. They made Jesus visible in public places. Their face would not conceal behind closed doors. It erupted into the streets of Jerusalem and in consequence, eventually, to us. That's how we heard the good news, because they took it out. That's what I love about praise in the park. I love that. I'm so looking forward to that. It really is an opportunity to show people where we are and the church is alive and kicking and it cares. All our different forms of worship, the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the Methodists, the Catholics and us, all together worshipping the one God that we love, worshipping, declaring our love for Jesus and his love for us. I love praise in the park. When I was a kid, I lived near the sea, we used to have services on the beach. You don't get much of their stuff now, maybe it's the weather. But we do need to think about getting, our, getting out. Our church is a necessary place. We need to come into our churches where we meet and share fellowship where we learn scripture and more about our faith and each other. Growing together as individuals. But the purpose of this is to get so caught up in the wonders of God that we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to share it, the power of the Spirit, and take it out into the world. <coughs> it's a happy coincidence that this wit, this Pentecost, coincides with the 70th Jubilee of our Queen. She's always spoken out to witness to her faith, never afraid to quote the words of Jesus. We're so blessed to have had su to still have such a monarch and to have lived with her example of fortitude and service. She has placed her faith in open view and communicated her trust in Jesus. As the Archbishop of York said, 
in St Paul's the other day. He said, I'm not ashamed that I lean on Jesus. And that's who our Queen has lent on in her 70 years. God places each one of us where we, where we are, where we are now. And each one of us is unique. Consequences, there are many ways to witness to Jesus and each of us does it by being who we are. The Holy Spirit goes before us to lead us and into truth. We don't take God into places. He's there already preparing the way, waiting for us, waiting for us to work with him and make Jesus known. There are many who never heard the good news, many who've drifted away, many who need the gift stirring up, and they need someone who will go beside them and point the way and act with love and compassion. This is our commission, to be like Jesus in our love and concern for the lost. Maybe we should make our mission field our place of worship or our neighbourhood. Maybe take our home groups into the pub or Starbucks. <laughs> this may sound a little way out, but we must remember there are no limits to the way the Spirit works. Who could imagine that the Holy Spirit would work through this equipment, taking the gospel to those who can't get out, taking our services to those who share our love of Christ but can't come and join us. The Holy we should never, never restrict God, restrict the Holy Spirit. It's like the rushing of the mighty wind or the gentle breeze breathing his spirit on us. So many ways God muses. Some may imply that if your experience of God is not the same as theirs, then you're not saved. You don't have tongues, you can't have the spirit. Some arrogantly claim, and I hope we're not among them, but maybe some are, that their brand of faith is the best. It may be the best for them, but there are no second-class citizens in the kingdom of God. No limits to the way God works. If we really want to fulfill our commission and see the impact of the gospel on people's lives, instead of staying in the safety of our meetings, we must be prepared for events that will challenge us. But when we step outside, fueled by the Holy Spirit, the Great Commission becomes a reality. The world is in a mess. Nature, human nature, is selfish. It will never change. We will never change unless the Holy Spirit changes us. The life-changing gospel is the only hope of our topsy-turvy world. Two children arguing about which is the last book in the Bible. The little girl says it's Timothy. No, Barbara, it's not Timothy. Timothy's not the last book in the Bible. The last book in the Bible is Revolution. <laughs> the gospel message certainly produces a spiritual revolution. A spiritual revolution in human life. And it begins where it's needed, inside us. By his life-giving Holy Spirit and faith in Jesus, the miracle of the new birth in the heart of mankind. 
we become a new creation. Let's take it out into the world and create a revolution. stand to declare our faith. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. So let's just uh, sit now as we come to our prayers. your goodness to us. When we consider all the things that you do for us day by day, we are amazed. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, that we have lived in a country where we haven't had war here for so long, and we pray, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit we may witness to the world that war is not of your doing. We thank you, Lord, for those who preach your word. We thank you for our bishops, archbishops. We thank you for the word of the archbishop on Friday and Saturday. And we pray, Lord, that that will go out and hearts may be touched to what he said. And we thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to speak freely about our faith. And we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you will empower each one of us to share the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 Oh Lord, we thank you for our Queen. When we have such a thing as the Jubilee, Lord, we realise just what we have to be thankful for when we recount things that have happened over her reign. We thank you for her faith in you and her example. And we pray that you'll be with her day by day and be with her family and strengthen them. May they follow her example. And Lord, we pray for those who work under her in government. Guide them, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray that we may be once more a God-fearing nation. Lord, in your mercy. In your oh Lord, we pray for the children of the world. So many children through war, famine, <clears throat> violence, are being robbed of their childhood. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will so work in the hearts and minds of men and women that they will move to remove these obstacles, that you will help these children to grow and to grow in the faith that they too may be strong witnesses to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh Lord, we pray for places, Syria and Ukraine and all the places in the world that are in constant turmoil and innocent people, civilians, are being tortured, destroying their homes and everything they have. Oh Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit may move in all our hearts, that we may constantly pray for them, that we may bring them to you, Lord, and that they may conquer the evil that's being done. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
And Lord, we pray for those that are sick. We pray for those who care for them, that you will strengthen them, that you will keep them, Lord, in a constant vigil over those that they care for. We pray for those that we know, Lord, in the silence. May they know your presence, Lord. May they feel your loving care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord, we pray for those who have run their race and they are now in glory with you. We pray for those who mourn for them. Lord, you, you wept over Lazarus and we pray, Lord, that you'll be with those who mourn because you knew what it was like. You know all our woes. You know all our, our, the things that are wrong with us. All our emotions are the emotions that you felt, Lord. So we pray that you will draw close to those who mourn and give them the faith to know that they, all those that have died in your love, you will see them again. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. We thank you for our fellowship with one another, Lord. We thank you for this place where we can share you and Lord, we pray that you'll be with each one of us in the coming week. Go with us and help us, Lord, to take our faith with us, not to leave it at home, but to take our faith with us. <coughs> we make Jesus visible in the world around us. Merciful Father, accept our prayer for the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And Christ stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of God with each other with an absurd way. Everlasting Father.
mercy and not judgment, draw us from hatred to love, and make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we will give thanks because in the fulfilment of your promise, you poured out your Holy Spirit on us filling us with the gifts, leading us into all truth, and uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells, to proclaim your glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Aha. I'm going to plug it in, mate. Lord, your holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the same night that he was betrayed to the bread and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood. Take this, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, I call into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the apostles and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When we come to communion, if you form one line, and uh, if you don't want to receive uh, the wine, just once you've had uh, the bread, just go back to your seat. Okay? If you want to receive it, stay where you are, and my minion. We'll bring it to you. <laughs> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Hallelujah. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. The Lord has peace and peace.
So I've got two things coming up now. Uh, the first thing coming up is on the 15th of June, which is a Wednesday, uh, over in uh, St. James in the evening, we are teaching a basics Christianity course, uh, which is all about turning to Christ. So it's looking at baptism, really, and what that means. Uh, so come along to that. We've got about 10 people on it so far. So come along, me and Joanne are running that. Uh, Joanne's going to do it professionally. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know. That's true, don't ask what's going to happen, isn't it? It's just, you know, let's be honest, right? Yeah. But uh, I'm sure it'll be good. But we're looking at, you know, what is Christianity? What's it all about? Uh, what does it mean? And how can we implement that in our lives? Then at the end of the month, on the 26th of June, we have Praise in the Park, uh, down in Kingsgate Park. Uh, so some idiots put me on to preach at that, so uh, there we are. It's not, it's not a good advert really, is it? Let's be fair. Right, so anyway, that's, that's happening then, uh, where all the churches are coming together on the 26th of June. And also as well, that evening is the Parish Communion up at St Peter's as well. I'm not preaching the St. Peter's, no, they, they let me off that. Uh, so, our next week is uh, morning prayer, down here at uh, St. Nick's. And don't forget to get your parish magazines, they're out uh, from uh, this week actually, so, or last week, because it's the first Sunday of the month. Please pick one of them up uh, from the back. And they're also online as well on our website, so you can find out everything that's happening on there. Next one is birthdays. Does anybody have a birthday? No? Church. The church. We're not saying happy birthday to the church because that's <laughs> cheesier than Top Gun Maverick. And I've seen that film, and that is a cheesy film. Right? So we're not doing that, that's cheesy. Um, nobody had a birthday? Oh, fair enough. Okay, there you go. Right then, so this week's challenge on the birthday of Jesus. Um, Norma in her sermon was talking about uh, being uh, the church outside in the building and being those people who make Jesus visible. Okay, having the courage to do that inspired by the gospel. So, one way to help us think about that, really, is through the, the lens of Christmas. Now, if you remember in Advent, one of the Advent hymns is, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Do you remember that one? Yeah? And what we do there, we ask for Christ to be born into our world. And then Christ is born into our world at Christmas, and then at Easter we celebrate Jesus completing the mission that he was given but at Pentecost, what do we celebrate? Well, Pentecost 
is a bit like Christmas for us. Christmas is Jesus' birthday, uh, Pentecost is ours. And if you remember the story of Mary, where the angel comes to see her and says, would you like to have God's son? And she sort of goes, uh, all right, I think. <laughs> and then goes to see Elizabeth and goes, oh, it was true all along, and then celebrates. At Pentecost, we're called to do the same thing, to say yes to God, just like Mary did, and for Christ to be born inside us. All right? And when Christ is born inside us, what does that mean? Well, I went to see Top Gun Maverick last night, right? <laughs> it's a really cool film, right? And at the beginning of the film, it's brilliant, it's, it's a bloke film. We don't get bloke films anymore now, so it's a bloke film. But at the beginning, right, what happens is you have the music comes in and they have the shot of the aircraft carrier and all the blokes in the cinema went, yes! Because finally, it was a film that wasn't about a superhero. And the place came alive just a little bit. And in another really cool film called Highlander, there's a thing called the quickening, which is a Christian concept, the quickening. What the quickening is, is where the spirit comes into us and makes us feel more alive. All right? That's what the quickening is. It's an old Christian word for the coming of the Holy Spirit. We're imbued with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when we're with our families, we feel the quickening. Sometimes when we see a sunset or we go to see Top Gun Maverick or something else like that, we feel the quickening. Sometimes in church, we feel the quickening. Right? But what we have to be are people who are more alive than those around us. Alive with joy, that people can see that is Christ visible within us. So it's a mysterious thing really, isn't it? To feel a bit more alive and to show that life and joy around us. That's how we do it. We just be a bit more alive. And that's what they saw at Pentecost. They saw the apostles being a bit more alive. So when we go out here, let's be a bit more alive, a bit more joyful, a bit more kind, a bit more loving, but most of all, experience that quickening that makes us more alive. So that's our challenge this week, to be more alive, okay? Do you get it? Yeah? It's not that hard, is it? Yeah? Less miserable, more alive. Okay, yeah? All right, less miserable, yeah? Less catty, yeah? Less gossipy, all these sorts of things make you feel dead and a bit more alive, yeah? And then people will say, wow, what's up with him? What's up with him? He's made Jesus visible by being a bit more alive. Okay, so let's uh, sing together our last song now. I had to get top going, sorry. Uh, shine, Jesus, shine. We'll shine. There we are by being a bit more alive. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with 
gaze on your kingly brightness So our faces display your likeness Ever changing from glory to glory Mirrored here may our lives tell your story Shine on me Shine on me Shine Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.